Welcome back. Today's video is nothing but a review. If you need more than a review, this is not the video for you on nomenclature in chemistry. So the first thing I want to do is this. I want to draw my focus to this zigzag line across the periodic table. And why do I want to focus on that? For one simple reason. Metals to the left of me. Non-metals to the right. And why is this important? Well, there's more to it than this. But for general purposes, I'm going to go ahead and say that if you see anything to the left of this zigzag line in that problem, we will call it ionic. If you look at the problem and everything, everything in it is to the right, then in this case, we will call it a covalent. We're going to kind of make it simple in those regards. So for the purposes of our next exam, the first thing you should do is look. If I give you an entire list of questions, if I give you a list of questions, and where is what I'm looking for? If I give you a list of questions, and it says something like CaCl2NO2, uh, oh my goodness, FeSO4, blah 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 the first thing you should do is go through each question and identify i want you to ask yourself is it ionic is it covalent or is this an acid is what i want you to do and if you don't know how to tell if it's an acid we'll get to that in a second well i can make that easy for now if it's an acid you can tell it because it will start with the letter H. So if it starts off with an H, then we're going to call that one an acid. So say, for example, if you saw H2SO4. But I want you to go through each one. I want you to identify what is it. For example, CaCl2. Calcium is way to the left of that zigzag. So this one would be ionic. <coughs> NO2. N and O are both to the right of the zigzag. So this guy is going to be covalent. Iron, Fe, is to the left of the zigzag. So I will call him ionic. And this one starts with an H. So I will call him an acid. That is the first priority I want you to do with every single question. Is this ionic or covalent? <coughs> so what does that mean to me? If it is ionic, I am going to be obsessed with plus and minuses. I'm going to look at every problem and write something plus something, something minus something. That is going to be huge on my priority list every time. The second thing is, those of you who've done this for, we're going Clint Eastwood with it. Do I need a Roman numeral? And you better by this point know what a Roman numeral is and what it's used for. So what about if it's covalent? Well, the great thing is no plus, <coughs> no minus. I don't care. If it's covalent and you do pluses and minuses, you're probably going to screw yourself up. The only thing I even need is my mon, my di, and my tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca is my biggest concerns. So one more time, what about the acids? So what about when we start looking at acids? How are we going to tell that we've got an acid? We've already said it. It starts with an H. So if I see an H, I'm going to be like, hey, this is an acid. And so there are two types of acids. So I will break this up into two parts. There's one type of acid that is H plus just one element. That's one type of binary acid. Those are the easiest because those always go hydro something ick acid. Those are the easiest ones. I love those. The second is when you have H plus a polyatomic in there. And you, at this point, you'll be able to recognize a polyatomic. Y'all, those are the best. All they are is 8 to X, ites to uses when we name those. And that's all we've got to do on our acids. So identify if it's H plus one element. For example, HBr. 
The second I see that, I know that this is a hydroacid. So I can call this hydro. Br is bromine. So all I'm going to do is bromic acid. Hydro bromic acid is all that I've got to do. So anytime I see the word hydro and my acid, all I know is it's going to be H plus 1 and a single element out beside it, minus something, whatever it is. If it's hydrofluoric, it'd be HF. That's all I'm looking for. Whereas in the case of the polyatomics, let's go back to this one, H2SO4. What is this guy? Well, all you got to do, you see the H, so you know it's an acid. You see SO4. When you look up sulfur or SO4, you'll find sulfate. And so sulf, and then you see eight to ick, and some people just write sulfic. I wouldn't even mark you wrong. I'm not that picky, but we'd call it sulfuric acid, and that would be our name. Eight goes to X. So now, pop quiz. A couple of random ones thrown at you real quick. So let's say, for example, if you were sitting here doing this and you saw N2, O5, go, name me. Well, if you went to name him, you would see on the periodic table both N and O are to the right. That means I am covalent, which means I don't plus, minus, I don't care on this covalent one. All I need to do is look at this. That's di, and that's a mon. So my answer is di nitrogen mon oxide. And that is all I've got to do. So every single one, all I'm going to do is look at it. And I'm going to try and identify this as quick as I can when I'm doing it. So say, for example, I was doing one, and what about if I saw this? Fe, hmm, Fe2, Fe3PO42. So, what about this guy? Well, instantly I go to my lovely zigzag and I see iron is over here. And so I'm instantly, I'm like, this iron is to the left, this is ionic. So that means I need to be thinking plus, minus, Roman numerals. So when I go to name iron, I'm going to ask myself that question. Do I need a Roman numeral? Well, when I look above iron, I see the numbers 3 and 2. That means, yeah, I need a Roman numeral. PO4 is phosphate. But that doesn't help me to make that decision on Roman numeral. So I'm going to look up what PO4's oxidation is. It's a negative 3. So here's my choice. Iron is three or two. Well, you've got to do something. You've got to look at these numbers and figure out what's going to balance this out. Three and three would be nine. Three and two and three is six. That's not, it's got to be, if that's three and two, this number over here has to be three and two as well. So we know that this is iron Roman numeral two on the phosphate over here. Do this for each one. That's what's the most important. What about with an acid? What if you were given one? What about if you saw carbonic acid? So what about this? You're writing the equation, carbonic. You see that it's an acid. That tells me to write H. And here's where some people mess up. I'm a plus and minus kind of guy, so I write H plus 1. And now look, this this acid, do you see the word hydro? No, you do not. That means that this is a polyatomic. So ick means 8. So I look at my polyatomic list, and carbonate is CO3 minus 2, which means in order for this to be right, I need two of those H's. Boom, and there is my answer inside there. So what if I saw the word hydro? Uh, what if I saw hydroiodic acid? One more time, I see acid. That tells me, hey, man, write H plus 1. I see, oops, hydro. If I see the word hydro, I know that this is just H and a element. I'm talking about periodic table. It's 
an element. I O iodic, it's just iodine minus one, and that is my answer that's on there for that reason. So what about if I gave you copper two nitrate? What you gonna do? What does the Roman numeral tell you? It tells you when you write CU, you write a plus two. That's what this number means. It's telling you plus two. Nitrate, NO3, minus one. Make your pluses and minuses balance. Do not miller this up. Put your two outside these parentheses so that you got two NO3s to take away both those electrons. All right, just a 10-minute video and a quick reminder. Hopefully, you got something out of this and a review before a test. But anyway, love you. Take it easy. Uh, akuna Matata.